thank you for visiting Lisa's Lair. I'm very happy that you decided to stop by this channel. I was online on YouTube watching um, the YouTube visit videos of Second Life residents, and I watched Lexi Nexon's video about her reflections on her 11 years in Second Life. Um, her res day was this week, and she was mentioning um, some things that I thought were very interesting, and so I wanted to, um, you know, talk about that because she was mentioning about how friendships are formed, how people are really, you know, defining friendships, you know, is it hard to find um, real friendships in Second Life? Is it hard to cultivate them? Because I don't really think that we find friendships as much as we choose to cultivate a certain type of friendship once we meet someone. And I have been in Second Life for eight years. I mentioned that in lots of my videos. Um, but in my eight years, I have less than 25 people in my actual friend list. Now, that has changed. When I was a beginning in Second Life, people would just send a friend request if they had talked to you for half of a minute, um, or they would just send you one because you're at the same sim that they are in or at the same event that they are, you know, attending and maybe you're at a discussion and you're commenting and suddenly you start getting um, friend requests from people who are sitting in the same, you know, discussion. So a lot of that happened to me when I was brand new in Second Life and I would just accept them, I guess. Um, I'm not quite sure, but I know that I've pared down my list considerably over the years. My list Try, I try to make sure that my list um, really only consists of people who I at least engage with once or twice a month um, because everybody isn't in Second Life every single day, even during this quarantine time. Everybody just isn't in Second Life every single day. People have busy careers. People have family obligations. They're doing other things. And so um, there are people that I have met in Second Life that I've known for years that I know probably only log in once a week or two or three times every two weeks. Do I consider those people um, friends that I would share like deep um, things with? No, I don't think so. Um, those people are few and far between online and offline, but they are still people that I do enjoy having conversation with. Um, they're in my friend list because they are people that if I was to receive um, a teleport invite to an event, I would probably respond to those people because I know what their interests are in Second Life and that I would probably enjoy whatever they were inviting me to. So those are those types of people that I would have in my friend list. Um, but I certainly don't just accept any friend requests just because we've had conversations. Now, here's another thing that um, I recently encountered is that one person that I have known for years in Second Life um, and that we have had some serious conversations over the years and talked about some personal matters as well. Um, that person died and um, this year, and a family member of that person is also in this virtual space. And so one day while I was online, um, I'm just enjoying myself in Second Life, and I get um, an IM message from someone who says that they are a relative of this person and that this person died um, two days ago. But while this person was communicating with me, um, this person mentioned to me that um, I'm contacting you because I was told to find, you know, the avatar, um, Lisa Smiles, and to let Lisa Smiles know um, that I've died. And I thought that that was really, really moving and touching that somebody considered me a friend that when they were dying and talking about, you know, their life and family and friends, you know, offline, that they thought also of the friends that they had made in line and had really told that family member names of people to notify. One thing that I want 
uh, to have a conversation about is the level of emotional vulnerability that you should decide to have or not decide to have um, in virtual spaces where anyone could present themselves as anyone that they feel like. And the other question I'd like to have comments on in the comment section is, do you vet people properly? Do you vet their character properly? And are you a person that gives more in a friendship or a romantic relationship even than you actually receive? Are you making sure that you are measuring that? Because many people say, oh no, I just give my all to everything. I give my all to every friendship. I give my all in every relationship. And I think that on the surface, that sounds very honorable. But as you mature in life, it doesn't because you need to assess every relationship that you're choosing and you need to assess what that person is giving in that relationship before you decide how much of an investment you are going to make. Because it doesn't make sense if you make an assessment that someone is only going so far in their emotional investment and you have noticed that for you to go way further than that. That's only setting yourself up for disappointment and hurt. So it's not a virtue to say, oh, I'll just give my all to everybody. Okay? You need to have criteria. This is what I have in my profile under First Life. If somebody clicks on uh, First Life and when they're just viewing my profile, they will see um, the headlines logo because that is a key event that I host on the grid that's open to anybody on the grid who's interested in discussing world events and the news. But Look at my conditions that I put down in my profile that I am not doing any online dating, that I do not do any cartoonized porn, um, that I do not Skype, that I do not share photos, that I do not give out my city, my phone number, my email, that the people I meet in virtual worlds remain in virtual worlds, and that I only use text chat. Well, it says usually, but Primarily, I'm just using text chat when I'm in world. Now, I'm showing you this because if you think about somebody reading that and they are somebody who's kind of dubious, who wants to play games in this virtual space, I'm probably not the person they're going to start engaging with. I've been in this virtual space for eight years and I do not have all of these drama stories that people are um, telling me about or who they met and what happened and who they dated and what happened. I do not have those stories to tell about my experience in this space, probably because I have not opened myself up to just any and everything, anyone who's expressing an interest. Um, and I think that Yes, you can go way overboard in being self-protective, but I think a lot of people, particularly, maybe I could say even women, um, but not generalizing because I realize we're all different people and not a monolith, but um, some people tend to be open right off the bat with everything without really gauging people and really screening character. And I know people will say that's hard to do in a virtual space. I don't think it's that hard to do. So put in the comment section what your thoughts are of how you really screen character. And is it different of how you screen character offline versus online? Let's have a conversation about it in the comment section. It's funny that I've had people ask at Second Life if I'm a man in real life, and I always laugh at the question. Um, I guess there's a lot of men who have female avatars, so I guess that's why it's a humorous question. But I've also had people ask what my race is um, away from Second Life. I always think that's a humorous question. The reason why I think these are humorous questions is because it makes me think, how would you engage with me any differently? How would you assess me differently if you had that information? What would change in our conversation um, if you had that information? And if nothing would even change in our conversation, then why is that something you're asking about or delving into? You know, that's kind of the interesting thing that I find a lot of times is that you're going to find in these virtual spaces that people are questioning you about things. But if you ask them, well, having that information, what would that change about this conversation right now? What would that change about future conversations? Usually their answer is, oh, I'm just curious. 
you're curious about something that wouldn't change anything in our interaction, in our conversations, in the topics that we, you know, cover when we interact, it wouldn't change. So that's, it doesn't make sense is what I'm um, pointing out. And so it happens a lot in Second Life. And I think that when we think about how are we cultivating friendships, are you really going from the angle of substance if you want friendships of substance? So that is the question in the comment section that I would uh, hope that you would be interested in responding to. I think this is a good topic. And shout out to Lexi and congratulations on your 11 years in Second Life. And everyone else, I hope you enjoyed uh, this topic and that you'll participate in the topic and that you'll come back and watch more videos.